Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. As you can see, this video will be all about how I got into medical school, which is just wild because, man, I feel like I've been dreaming about this day for such a long time. And here I am, two months away from being a medical student. I'm excited to just jump into how um, a little about my journey about who I am and yeah just hopefully I can help you all out it is medical school application season so happy application season <laughs> I hope you guys can learn something from this video um, or just take anything away from it first things first y'all my name is Dominique Galloway and I am 24 years old I am from Long Island New York um, and I went to Pepperdine University in Malibu, California for my undergrad, which was so awesome. I was able to be a Spanish major and I graduated in April of 2019. So let's get right into this video now. And I'm going to talk to you all about first my stats. It is not the only part of our application, but it is a big deal. You know, it is an important part of our application and I knew um, myself that I was definitely you know asking you know medical students that I knew or um, just youtubers that I watched I wanted to know you know what their stats were it is not the only thing that matters though and I do want to be here as a testimony to you that that is not the only thing that matters um, being a well-rounded candidate being someone that has passions that are shining through the application I feel like is something that's super important and I feel like I was able to do in my application and balanced out my stats because I was by no means a perfect student. I did not have perfect stats, y'all. And I do want to emphasize that to you because it is possible. What are my stats? <laughs> Let me get into it. So my cumulative GPA was a 3.71. My BCPM or science GPA was a 3.50 exactly. And my AO GPA, which is all others, I believe, is a 3.6 was a 3.79 GPA. We're gonna talk about my MCAT score now. Okay, so, y'all, I had a 500 MCAT score, like literally 500, 500. Um, and I was honestly in shock. Like I did not expect that score at all. And like I took all the AAMC practice exams and I did definitely better than that. I was expecting over a 505. That was what I wanted for myself. Um, the week prior, I got a 506, or literally a couple days prior to the real exam, I got a 506 on a practice exam. And, you know, I went in um, thinking I was going to do that again or get above a 505, but you know, I, I got that and I just knew that God was going to make it happen. So I did not take it again, <laughs> which honestly, nothing's wrong with taking it again. Personally, I took the MCAT January 17th, 2020, and by the time I got my score, it was, I think, end of February, and when I was actually thinking about taking it again, like having the possibility, that is when um, COVID, you know, the pandemic broke out, and all of the tests and exams were canceled, so I felt like, you know, <laughs> is it worth it? I'm gonna tell you guys the exact breakdown. So I got a 127 in chemical and physical foundations. Um, Y'all, this is embarrassing. I got a 121 in cars. What? I don't know how, I don't know where. I, it was definitely my lowest score out of all of my sections. I guess I'm just not a great reader. I'm better in science, but <laughs> um, I definitely never got a 121 in my practice exam. So I was just very, surprised um, and that is what ultimately brought down my score but I got a 126 in biological and biochemical foundations and I got another 126 in psychological social and biological foundations so there it is that is my breakdown of the MCAT and by the grace of God I am an incoming medical student let's get into my other parts of my application so Y'all, I had, you know, a decent GPA, I had a low MCAT. What is it that made me stand out though? You know, what allowed these admissions committees to think that I was worthy of an interview? You know, what made me stand out? 
So that is what I'm going to talk about now. What really molded my application was my passion for diversity and the underserved. And I feel like that really shined through my experiences and the amount of community service and volunteer hours I had. I also had a good amount of clinical hours, but y'all, I had no research hours at all. Not one, not one hour of research. So guys, that's also another thing. That's also another thing I want to talk to you guys about. It is not the end all be all if you do not have any research. I am a living testament of that as well. So I did not have any research, but what did I have? I had the clinical and I did have the community service. I did mention that I was a Spanish major, right? So I feel like that definitely already showed that I was a well-rounded candidate, um, that I was passionate about diversity. I did, um, you know, want to learn a new language and I was able to do that. And because I was a Spanish major, guys, I was also able to study abroad for 10 months in two separate countries. And so for my first eight months, um, my sophomore, my entire sophomore year, I was able to study abroad in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, it was amazing. I, I loved it so much and I was able to immediately right after that program go to Madrid, Spain for two months. And so that was 10 months abroad in two different countries, living with native families, speaking the language every single day. So I feel like that is something that definitely made me stand out. I do have a lot of different experiences and I am going to talk more about it in another video because it's just, I failed out all 15 and it wasn't just things that I just like did just to, you know, boost my application. Like I truly was passionate about all 15 experiences. So I will have a video devoted on, on that, my experiences and my personal statements. So stay tuned for that. What you can take away from that is it's really important to just find out what you're passionate about and really just get started on different experiences early on. So you do have the chance to even get leadership positions and then have the chance to gain great letters of recommendation because that's another significant part of our application and the interviewers will literally mention it on interview day as well so I'm thinking about those things early on um, especially if you're an incoming freshman to college really thinking about what activities and experiences you want to get involved in all right so lastly I'm gonna talk about how many schools I apply to how many into interview invites I receive and how many acceptances so let me go into it <laughs> all right so I did not have the greatest stats so I knew coming into the application cycle that I wanted to apply to a good amount of schools I wanted to have um, a greater chance to get in and I really did my research using I think it's called the MSAR it was just the medical school application um, resource is that what's called medical school application resource um, that they have with AMCAS so definitely use that. So I applied to a good amount of reach schools, a good amount of target schools, and a good amount of um, safety schools, where I feel like there's not really any school that's considered safe, but you know what I mean. But yeah, so I applied to 27 schools and I got three, three interview invites. And it's wild because they were all at very different times in the application cycle, like very different. I got my first interview invite on September 29th. I received my second interview invite on February 26th and I received my last interview invite on May 31st which is like what? Like I was not expecting another interview invite but yeah so three in total. I got accepted into one school, I got waitlisted on one school and I ended up just withdrawing my application because the school that I got accepted to I I just knew I wanted to go to that school over that second school that I got waitlisted at. So I ended up withdrawing the application there. And then literally this third interview that I received on May 31st, I just ended up declining the interview invite because I already was settled on, on the school that I got accepted to. So yeah, three interview invites, technically one acceptance. Who knows if I would have gotten accepted to those two other schools, but I'm very excited and happy about the school that I got accepted into. I am going to talk more about all the schools that I applied to, the schools that I received interviews at, and the school that I will be going to in another video. So I'll reveal that school. I'm also going to show you guys though, guys, I got accepted. I got accepted to medical school on March 12th. Literally the greatest moment. So amazing. I have my reaction video right here. <laughs> Baby girl got into med school with us. I got into school, y'all. Yeah. This is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> 
And it was wild. We're literally at the gas station. He's pumping the gas. And I just end up checking my email and I literally scream. When I tell you I screamed, everyone at the gas station looked over at our car like, what is going on? Like, man, I was just blown away because I knew I had faith, you know? I received so many rejection letters before I received my acceptance. So many. I knew I just had to keep having faith. Um, having faith in Jesus Christ, I have to keep trusting Him, and that is exactly what I did. And I eventually received that acceptance on March 12th, and here I am to say that if I can do it, so can you. It is very, very, very possible. Nothing is impossible with God. If you are applying right now, I'm wishing you the best on your application cycle. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned anything from this video, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe, put on the notification for my future videos, like, comment, do whatever you want to do. I'm just excited to just continue showing you all my journey and thank you so much for listening.